secondary sealants in insulated glass units. And we're gonna look at this physical sample, and then I'm gonna show you a few illustrations to further demonstrate the takeaway points. So really, with your secondary sealant joint, there are three primary functions. Number one, to maintain this gap between the two or three panes of glass. Number two, to provide an adequate sealant joint around the perimeter to prevent the inert gas from the inside of evacuating or escaping the insulated glass unit. Number three is to prevent any water vapor from entering into this airspace. So really, your objective with an adequate or highly functioning secondary sealant is to protect your primary sealant around the perimeter. So if you really think about it, an insulated glass unit in an architectural setting um, is under extreme forces. And so when you have a pressure differential between the inside of your glass and the outside conditions with varying forces, you're gonna ultimately get deflection on the panes of glass. And so there's gonna be an, um, a resulting stress induced on this secondary sealant joint. And that might occur due to wind loads, uh, UV radiation, handling during the manufacturing process, installation, and so forth. So an adequate sealant, secondary sealant joint design is critical to ensure long-term durability. So let's look at a few illustrations to review a few secondary sealant joint designs. Okay, a few illustrations and examples to show and then our physical sample. So as we discussed, this is your secondary sealant joint and ultimately is, it is designed to reduce the mechanical stress on this, which is your primary sealant joint, which is keeping the cavity weather tight. So when designing this secondary sealant joint, you typically have three options, polysulfide, polyurethane, and silicone. And silicone will typically reign supreme when it comes to structural performance and durability. So when looking at a few of these examples, you could see you have all kinds of different spacer system materials and designs, but ultimately, when it comes to your primary seal or your PIB, as temperature or outside temperature increases, the strength is gonna decrease, which is why we need such a durable secondary sealant to protect this inner layer. So a few things to consider are your dimensions, your uh, surface that you're adhering to, your structural bite, your width uh, and depth rather, and so forth. And then thermal performance. So it's actually the case that when you have a full cavity of sealant like this, you are going to get heat transfer across this surface. And you do have to consider the edge of glass performance when running a thermal model. So I actually really like this design, it's a little bit more advanced. You can see the spacer system sort of extends right here. And so instead of having to fill this whole cavity with sealant, you're, this is your sealant joint right here and you're relying on adherence or adhesion between the glass and silicone right here and then the silicone and spacer system. And as long as this joint is adequately executed, it should protect your primary sealant joint right here, which it is designed to do. And so A, you're reducing labor and cost by eliminating the need for silicone in this entire cavity. But B as well, you're gonna improve the thermal properties or heat transfer because all of a sudden now, you don't have all that silicone to carry the heat transfer across the body. So neat looking design right here, something to consider when designing an insulated glass unit, but a bunch of stuff for you guys to think about when designing secondary silicone joints in insulated glass units.